Hello YouTube and welcome to an all new Elder Scrolls lore video. Today we're talking about the board games, card games and dice games that the people in Tamriel play and some miscellaneous games sprinkled in there to make it spicy. This is one of those topics where I seem to be the only one on YouTube who even bothers to cover these kind of topics so I'm very excited to show you what I've learned about the topics in the past few weeks. So without any further ado, let's talk about some games. So first of all, on this subject we have a lot of information and at the same time we have very little information. Let me explain. We know a lot of different games that the people of Tamriel play, but only with a very select few of them we can actually say something about the specific rules or playstyles that go into them. That said, there are some very interesting things that we can say, so let's just start. First of all, the High Elves are basically the kings and queens of board games, since most of the culture specific board games that we have come from their culture. Meanwhile, we've only got one or two board games associated with the other races and in some ways none of them are really associated with the Wood Elves. Although the Imperials and the Khajiit also have some interesting board games and the Nords. Now the kings of card games are the Khajiit, who are closely followed by the Dark Elves who have a few interesting card games of their own. In terms of dice games, we know very little specific ones by name. We know that dice games are widely played across Tamriel, as we know that each race produces a variety of their own dices to play games with. But the only two dice games that we actually know of for sure that exist within the Elder Scrolls universe are two Nord drinking games. One called Deceiver's Dice, which has a travel sized version often plays in the taverns. And a game called Drogger Drogger Lich, also a Nord drinking game which we don't really know much of other than it has some people play it with dice carved out of mammoth tusk. And it apparently has a children's version called Sheep Sheep Goat. It's really strange that these are the only two dice games that we actually got some lore on, especially since in the Elder Scrolls Online we can find many 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 different types of dice sets associated with all the races, meaning that everybody does indeed play dice games, we just don't know any specifics. That said, we also know that some games are played universally in Tamriel, by every race, or at least nearly every race. A good example is Chess, a game that we know that multiple races on Tamriel play, and it's presumably the same as its real-world counterpart in terms of rules and playstyles. Another example is Scrabble. Yeah, Scrabble. While not named as such in the game, in Elder Scrolls Online we can find a set of small wooden letter tiles which in its description says that it's used to play a traditional commoner spelling game where people make words with the tiny wooden tiles with letters on them. Also implying that even commoners on Tamriel can actually read and write, something that we already knew and we often take for granted but it's often interesting to be reminded of as not every fantasy universe has that and especially not our own world uh, in the medieval times had it. Other board games played by every race or multiple races are games uh, that we don't really know a lot of. One is called Nine Shells, a game that, again, we don't know a lot of. Uh, we've got Checkers, which a lot of races apparently play. And the strategy game called Three Banners War, a three-player board game in which Three Banners War is simulated. So the war that's going on during the Elder Scrolls Online. I personally imagine this to be something like three-way chess or something, but we don't really know any of the rules, only that it's played with three players and everybody takes a faction. In terms of card games which every race plays, we don't really know the exact names of the games or rules, uh, other than one game called Venom Heart, of which we don't know anything but the name. What we do know that is, is that on Tamriel there is a somewhat of a playing card industry, as there are many many different sets of playing cards, such as Daedric playing cards f featuring sketched images of the Daedric princes on them and their minions, but also race-specific playing cards such as Bosmer sets of playing cards that we, which we know that they have the Green Lady and the Sylvanar, two important figures in Bosmeri culture, on the back of the cards. In addition to that we also know that over all of Tamriel we can find examples of tarot cards, uh, some in Daedric variety and some of variety with noble houses. Now. A little disclaimer, I know nothing about tarot cards and I've never heard of people actually playing games with them, but in the Elder Scrolls Online these items are classified under games, so I assume that they're used to play games in the you know, you know, Elder Scrolls world, and perhaps in a real world as well, but then I just haven't heard of it. 
That being said, those were some of the non-race specific uh, games that we have. Most of the information that we do have lie with the culture specific games. And one interesting piece of information is that while often generic games such as chess have their sets made of wood or sometimes metal, racial specific games are often made out of materials unique to the culture or which are re readily available to the culture. A good example is the Kajiti board game called Nine Holes, which is made out of carapaces of large desert insects which stride across the deserts of elsewhere. This is a good example of how cultural specific games are made with materials that the culture has easily on hand. Other examples of Kajiti board games include the game Noddy, which is a game played on a wooden board and it involves cards being laid on the board, meaning that it's a partial card game, but since it involves a game board, I'm putting it in the game board section as well. For the Khajiit, we also have the game Swanstones, which is a board game which actually appears as a furniture piece in the Elder Scrolls Online, meaning that we can actually see what the game looks like, which is a rarity with most of these games. Unfortunately, as you can see on the board, I can't really make anything of this board that we can see here. Maybe any of you can put any parallels to the real world with this game, but I can't. It doesn't resemble any game that I know. The board is basically a decorated half cylinder with two rows of holes in it, where different shaped gemstones fit into the holes. It kind of reminds me of a Malacca board, but that game is played with multiple marbles in the holes instead of one big gemstone. Uh, I, if I had to guess it, the game probably involves you moving your gemstones toward the other player's swan or toward your own swan, but since we don't have any rulebook of this game, it's anyone's guess how it's actually played. Now, Another race that we have two game boards of that we can see in the game itself are the Nords. For the Nords we have this game which is called Blood on the Snow. And it seems to be some sort of strategy game where the blue and red player take out each other's game pieces and advance on the other player's camps in the corners of the board. It kind of reminds me of the game Stratego that which we have in the real world. While at the same time it reminded my friend Mr. Dragon Sneeze of the Chinese game Shang-Chi. Uh, none of them completely fits this game but... I can see where Mr. Dragon's Seas is coming from. And perhaps anyone in the comments can make it out what game this is actually based on. Maybe it's even sort of, I don't know, basic version of chess, but I don't know, the game pieces are too similar. Now the other Nordic game that we have as a furniture piece in the game is the Nordic board game called The Warrior and the Wolf. The rules of this game are unclear to me, but it features two main pieces, a warrior and a wolf piece. Uh, likely the two player pieces and then three smaller pieces on each of their teams and judging by the board we have in the game it's likely that the two players compete over the big piece in the center but how it's actually played is anyone's guess it doesn't remind me of any game in real life other than those two games we know of one other nordic board game appearing in the lore which is called dragon's duel and we don't have a board for it but apparently it's a strategy game where the players move their pieces made out of precious stones around a wooden game board and simulate battles between two branches of the dragon cult vying for power in the ancient times now that we have the nordic games behind us i think that one game which deserves a special mention in this video is a game made by the argonians we literally know nothing of this game, other than that it's played with a richly decorated set of carved game pieces. Um, now the reason that we don't know anything about this game is because the game is incomprehensible to any non-Argonians, which seems to be a trend in Argonian culture. As I semi-recently made a video on the Argonian ball game called Tiba Hetsai, which also has changing and incomprehensible rules for non-Argonians. The same thing happens when we look at the Argonian card games. One game, nicknamed Blackwood Boasts, is made out of wooden cards which apparently only Argonians know how to shuffle and to use. This means that all of the games that we know so far that Argonians created, only they can truly comprehend how to play them. Which is interesting, apart from one children's game which I'll mention in a bit. That said, a far more understandable game to the people of Tamriel is not a board game at all, but it's definitely a game which also deserves a mention in this video. It's called Kick the Khajiit, and in Elder Scrolls Online we can find the rulebook to the game, which has in its description, Kicking is featured prominently in this game, and it remains the only consistent feature in an otherwise arbitrary collection of guidelines. I just found this one hilarious and I thought it deserved a mention. <laughs> Anyway, for the Red Guards, we only have one board game that we know that they play. It's called Hammergammon and it's played with a folding wooden board. This game is obviously just backgammon. It's played with a wooden board, ivory game pieces and jade multiplier dices. The interesting thing is that another version of backgammon, presumably with slightly altered rules, is played in Morrowind by the Dunmer, where the game is called Shell Backgammon, where the game board, game pieces and dices are all made out of Kwama egg shells and carapaces. 
Other than Shellback Gammon, the Dunmer also have a game that we actually know the way it looks because it's another game featured in the Elder Scrolls Online as a piece of furniture. It's called Foxes and Felines. Uh, the game name kind of reminds me of Hares and Hounds in our own universe, but as you can see with this game board, it's very, very different to Hares and Hounds. I honestly can't make anything of this, although a friend of mine said it might be a variation of the real world game Ludo, but it seems quite far away from that as well, so I don't know, maybe you guys have any ideas. Now, next to Foxes and Felines, we have one other Dunmer board game that we know of, which is called Valet's Conundrum. Uh, we don't know a lot about this game other than it being a puzzle game played with ebony game pieces. Now next up are the Bretons. Uh, we only have one board game of we know of that the Bretons play which is called Traitor's Tor. A strategy game recreating the last battle in Rancers War on which I just so happen to have made a lore video. So, you know, maybe watch that if you want to know what Rancers War is. We also know that the Bretons play a lot of chess but that's something shared with basically all the other races. We also only have one orcish board game that we know of, which is called Payback. It's played with 32 pawns, a game board and 16 onyx and 16 moonstone gemstones, which each player needs to try and steal from the other, presumably. But more than that, we don't really know anything about the game. Alright, so now we only have two races left with our board games, the Imperial and the High Elves. But before we head into their board games, there's one other worthy mention. Uh, the Clockwork Apostles of the Clockwork City, the students of Sota Seal. They also have their own games, which are all very complicated. But one worthy mention is a dice game, which doesn't have a name given to it in the game. But we can find a dice set, uh, which kind of reminds me of Dungeons and Dragons. Which is kind of fun. The idea that people play Dungeons and Dragons in Clockwork City. Anyway. Now let's talk about the Imperials, as we know several of their board games, although none of them appear in the game and none of them we have a specific rule set on. First up we've got two strategy games, one called Battle on the High Seas and a strategy game passed down from the Akaviri Invasions and brought from Akavir called Akaviri Domination. And we've also got a game played on a board with a triangular pattern on it, which is called Strife, which we don't know any of the rules of. And finally, we have a game called Diamond Duel, apparently based on an Elite ritual. This board game was likely passed down in Cyrodiil from the time that the Elite still ru uh, ruled Cyrodiil, which is pretty cool. It's a bit of a shame that we don't know anything about any of those games in terms of rules, but they all seem to fit Imperial culture well in terms of theming from what I can hear from the descriptions. Now, finally, we've got the High Elves, the race which has by far the most board games. To start with, we know that they play Marble Patients, or Pashans, I don't really know how to pronounce this. Uh, as we can see, several of those game boards scattered around Eleanor in basically every place of relaxation and in taverns, meaning that's probably quite popular. Uh, we can't see this as a furniture piece, nor can we find it as something that we can steal or as an item with the description at all. So we don't know if it's called anything different than Marble Pashans or Patients in um, the game universe but they play that game so that's fun in addition to that we also know that the high elves play chinese checkers but in their culture it's called punctilious conflict played with marbles on a star-shaped board yeah this is this is chinese checkers and this one as you can see also appears in the game as furniture which is very cool the high elves also have four more game boards that do not appear directly in the game but which are mentioned only one is a mathematical board game called Angles and Arcs, where players need to calculate complex shapes on top of their head as quickly as they can. You've also got the game Pearls of Piendene, which has hundreds of tiny crafted pieces out of wood, sea glass and pearls, which are said to be extremely complex in terms of rules and which is a really hard game to master. But other than complex and competitive games, we also got casual games for the High Elves. One is Cross Stones, of which we don't know anything. And the game Where is Falanesti, which is a board game where the players take turns on a board trying to guess where the city of Falanesti is. In addition to those board games, the High Elves also have a few other games such as Crystal Column, a game of essentially Jenga, where people take crystal blocks out of a tower trying to make it not tumble over as you take your crystal. Unfortunately, most game sets seem to break after the first game, according to the description, because of course the tower falls over and unlike wooden blocks, which we use for Jenga, uh, crystal blocks actually break, so yeah, that's a problem. The High Elves also have the Heritage Stacking game, which is basically a stacking puzzle where pairs of ancestors need to be matched in order to create the correct family tree. They also have a card game called Towers 8, which is said to be complicated, but we don't know any of the rules of the game. 
And finally, the High Elves have their own version of the spin the bottle game, but rather than using a bottle, they use a specific type of arrow. It's said to be popular with High Elf youth at parties. One race which I haven't really mentioned so far are the Bosmer. They don't really have board, card or dice games specific to their culture, but they do have some other games specific to their culture, of which we know only two. One is essentially darts, but it's played with darts fashioned out of deer antlers, which have been sharpened. Another game is called Perchance Acorn, a game where the Bosmer hide acorns from one another in an area dedicated to the game. So by now we have a few games left to mention, specifically card games and some miscellaneous games. Let's start with the card games, of which we all don't really know a lot. First the Bretons, who have a card game called Pranks and Pleasures. The Dunmer have two known card games, one is called Shenanigans and the next is called Three Tab Crony. Now this game, we know that the Tribunal branded the game as heretical and as illegal since the rules and terminology of the game paint the Tribunal as betrayers. Pretty interesting if I have to say so myself, but we again don't know anything else about the game. Now the kings of card games are the Khajiit, of whom we know three existing card games. First we have five claw cards, which seem to be reminiscent of poker as it's played with coins and a good hand is called a five claw flush. Another game is called Three Moons Favor, which we don't know the rules of, but we do know that the cards feature different moon phases and a complex game is played with it. Finally, we also have that game I mentioned earlier, Noddy, which is the card game played with a game board, so it kind of fits in both categories. Now, finally, we have some honorable mentions, which aren't really cardboard or dice games and are also quite interesting and deserve a mention in a video like this. Uh, we've got a game by the Khajiit, it's called Gurajin's Dance, where a bunch of small pyramid-like shapes are scattered in an area and blindfolded Khajiit need to find their way through without stepping on the pointed ends of the small pyramids. So basically trying to, you know, not step on the Legos, essentially, with a blindfold. We also got the Argonian game Toad a Lattle, where toads are being flung for an unknown purpose using a catapult-like stick. This is apparently a kid's game. And finally we have Dwarf Ball, a Nordic ball game played with a strange Dwemer Sphere where they looted the Dwemer Sphere from Dwemer Ruins. It's kind of reminiscent of squash or tennis as the balls are being smacked around with broad, with broad sticks. And that's where most of Tamriel's card, dice, board games and some extras. I included basically all the information I could find in this video and now I'm very tired as the recording of this script has been pure torture with my flu being the way it is. My voice might get a bit better, but I've had to cut this script literally every minute because I started coughing. Anyway, before I end this, allow me to specifically thank Mr. Sainted Owl on the EU Xbox ESO server, who managed to craft all of the in-game furnishing boards for me and allowed me to take screenshots of them. This guy was a lifesaver and the video couldn't have been made without his help, so thank you Mr. Sainted Owl and the entire guild of Webajackoffs, which is his guild. The video wouldn't have been possible without the help. And also, as is customary, allow me to thank my top patrons, Mr. Bernardo Binda, Gabriel Binda, Athena Hyotis, Polarized Poutine, Sarah Mikhail, Sort of Bushido, and Mr. Christmas. These amazing people, along with all the other Patreon supporters on screen, keep this channel alive, and for that I am very grateful. That said, I'm going back to bed, and I'll see you all next time in the next Elder Scrolls lore video. Hopefully I'll be less sick by next week. Bye-bye.